and welcome to Exchange for Media. As the real world continues to struggle with the ongoing COVID pandemic, we all have been pushed even more into the digital world. From shopping to schooling to even weddings, everything is now on your screen. In these times, marketers have no choice but to sell their brands digitally, bringing brand safety back into the center of every debate. With me today is someone I can surely address as an expert on the subject. Please welcome Mr. John Montgomery, Group M Global EVP Brand Safety. Welcome to the show, Mr. John. Thank you very much and thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Uh, to begin with, I want to understand from you what kind of conversations have marketers uh, are marketers engaging in now after the pandemic about the brand safety. That yeah, the the, the pandemic has affected almost every area of of our advertising. Uh, as you're probably aware, um, uh, marketers weren't sure exactly how to advertise in the pandemic. Uh, uh, I, I think that they want to be sensitive to the uh, the the pain that people are going through, and so uh, sending advertising messages that are the normal kind of advertising during the pandemic wasn't a good idea. So a lot of advertisers paused their advertising whilst they reassessed their strategies um, uh, to look at adver- You know, so I think that the media media companies uh, saw uh, a, a reduction in advertising. That was the the first area. Then our then our clients thought, what is the best way for us to advertise? How can we add value to people's lives? Uh, how can we help them? Um, and and I think a lot of a lot of advertisers jumped in to to on the social issues like making making sure that you wash your hands properly, um, making sure that you you social distance, wear masks, um, uh, behave responsibly. Uh, messages of of support uh, for families, and I, I think a, a lot of that sort of social um, uh, uh, reinforcement found its way f- found its way into advertising, and then and that was really more from the creative side. But then on the media side, uh, we started having conversations with clients about, well, what about being adjacent to uh, bad news or grim news about the death toll and about, or, you know, and I'm sure that you've had s- similar kind of news coverage in India that we've had here in the US. And our client said, is that a bad thing for us to be adjacent to that content? And a number of clients in the US uh, d- <clears throat> withdrew their advertising from from news or otherwise used a technology called keyword avoidance. That was my next question. <laughs> okay, so we'll, so so we'll segue into that. But but so so I think that was the 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 big change in the pandemic was uh, can we advertise safely? Uh, and then and then we can we can talk about that later in the conversation too, of course. But then there's the the area of disinformation and and fake news that that is rife in something like a, a crisis like this. So, you know where uh, there's so much bad information about, you know, drinking bleaches and da- some, some stuff that's really dangerous um, uh, that can come from even senior people in the in the government. John, you were in India last year. You understand the India market also. So uh, India is a very cost-conscious market and uh, ensuring brand safety comes at a price. So are Indi- uh, Indian brands ready to bear that cost? Yeah, uh, it, it, it's interesting. Um, I, I, uh, this would be um, I've been to India three times uh, on from a brand safety perspective, and every time I come, I think that marketers understand the risk uh, uh, more. And uh, and and it's not just adjacency to inappropriate content, but it's making sure that your advertising is is aimed at the right demographic, that it avoids uh, invalid traffic or or or, or fraud. Um, that it's you know that that you have the, the right privacy controls in place. So brand safety is sort of an umbrella term for any risk in the digital supply chain. Uh, I think that our clients are becoming more and more aware. And every time I visit India, we have more clients using um, that technology. But I would say that the international brands are still the ones that are investing in brand safety and high quality content. Um, the local Indian brands are still a little circumspect about the costs. And, and uh, unfortunately, the costs of verification tend to be more or less the same around the world. 
So the dollar costs to a U.S. advertiser would seem lower, whereas the media costs in India are, tend to be a little lower so that the verification costs appear higher or, or, or are a higher proportion of their media spend. And so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a more difficult um, financial decision for, 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 for Indian advertisers to make. Particularly in these times where, you know, we're, we're, we're really going through a difficult, the economy is going through a difficult phase. So, uh, do you still believe that if marketers and advertisers will go for brand safety, they'll, they'll be investing in this uh, particular yes. technology? So, so obviously, my, my job revolves around brand safety and I see the the dangers of, of, of inappropriate content and fraudulent content. And, and in times like these, the fraudsters exploit the situation because they understand it. So the malware attacks uh, um, have gone up around the world um, by, by several fold. Um, and so the, the risks are higher in this time. So I, I guess it would be my job to recommend to advertisers to do this. Having said that, if you can't afford to do that, um, then there are several things that you could do. So for instance, dealing with um, vendors and suppliers that you know, uh, buying from preferred transparent lists on in, in, pro, in programmatic supply chain. So in other words, don't buy the cheapest uh, long tail inventory in programmatic supply, but, in, but, but, but uh, buy from preferred lists um, and buy through uh, 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 supply, supply side and demand side um, uh, uh, partners who are as trustworthy and as transparent as possible. So even if you can't do work with uh, vendors like Double Verify, Integral, uh, Oracle, um, then there are ways of, of ensuring or or making sure that you are in you, you buy in what we call euphemistically well lit areas. You know, so uh, uh, areas that that you know and that you can see and that your particularly your media agency recommends are um, are uh, reliable and transparent and where we have a relationship. So it may mean that it would the, the, the inventory cost would be slightly higher, but we absolutely believe that it's worth it, particularly if you're concerned about um, the uh, your, your brand reputation in the market. Maybe bigger brands surely will invest. Uh, smaller brands might have to. Uh, I hope they to consider it because it is it is the need of the art. Yes, that's true. And I, I think we have to be sensitive to the fact that not everybody can afford it, but you can be smart about what you buy. Um, the, the more, the, the, the cheaper the inventory, the more you pursue the low cost per thousand at any, you know, at, at, as, your, as your, uh, your, 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 your primary optimization, the more dangerous uh, the, uh, it becomes, the more risk you expose your brand to. Uh, coming back to news, because I, I wanted to quote from your uh, last year's interview, where you mentioned that before, uh, earlier, the brands often tend to move money from news because of uh, because they're controversial in nature. There's, uh, there's, uh, there are chances of they turning out to be fake. Uh, but that scenario has changed now, considering that uh, news has become the most viewed category, particularly in India. I'm sure it's it's uh, everywhere because of COVID. Uh, a lot of people are watching news uh, on television, on digital, on mobile. So, uh, has your view changed? Uh, would you now tell marketers to continue to invest in this uh, particular uh, category? Yes, um, and and uh, uh, it's something that we feel very strongly about. Um, so, if you think about newspapers and everything we said in India last year is absolutely true is that newspapers or news organizations and publishers online um, in video and in, and in online print um, have been demonetized for a, a number of reasons, but mainly the, so, the social, social networks are so powerful, there's so much reach in the social networks that um, that, that has led to some of the demonetization over a period of time. What's added to it is, is advertisers that are concerned about controversial content. Um, and so a lot of those news organizations 
particularly the ones in the local newspapers and the local the, the local news publishers in smaller towns which are critical in terms of supplying people with advice in in uh during a crisis like a pandemic or um you know where you you the first place you go to is your local newspaper for advice where is it where is it safe for me to be where can i get tested where are, that's all you know you, you go to your local newspaper and so the, the 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 newspapers were already on their knees um but some of them were were were, were absolutely in critical situations where they really didn't have the revenue to continue and then COVID hit. So you can imagine, you know, as those organizations being vulnerable to the degree, to, to the extreme, and then COVID came along. And um, uh, one of the commentators in the US put it, put it uh, well, he said, this is an extension ev event um, for, 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 for local newspapers because local stores have shut, there's no longer that advertising. National advertisers were worried about, or you know, big big brands were worried about uh, the adjacency to to grim news. They reduced their advertising, and so uh, it became a real crisis for news. And so what we've done, and what we've done as an industry, but particularly Group M, is we've raised the awareness of the situation to marketers. And there, there are two things that we want marketers to understand. And this is true around the world, by the way, it's not a US centric, it's absolutely true uh, in India. Um, is firstly, uh, advertising in, in, in the news is highly effective. Uh, if you think about your own behavior, when you're reading a news article, your dwell time, the amount of time that you spend on an article is generally more than you would on a social news uh, um, uh, post posting. So the advertising gets a, a longer exposure to the consumer. Uh, the other thing is that consumers tend to, or readers tend to trust their local newspapers and their favorite newspapers more. So that trust rubs off on brands. And that's been supported by, by, by research. So we know that advertising in, in news organizations or news pub publications is already more, more, is more effective. Um, and, and so, and then the, the, the second part of that is there's evidence that even if your advertising is adjacent to controversial or hard news, it doesn't have a negative effect on, on your brands. In fact, in some cases it has a, a better effect because people are more absorbed in that article. Um, and so, so that was the, the, uh, the, 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 the one part of that. Uh, and so we went to the to the, the industry and said, uh, "You you're really killing newspapers at a at a very very critical time. Um, firstly, it's a good marketing vehicle, but secondly, for democracy, for free for free press, we really need to support uh, newspapers so that they can have journal afford to have journalism uh, journalists with feet on the ground in the areas reporting properly, uh, keeping corruption down." making sure that we, we, we uh, call politicians to order. Um, and, and that I think helped enormously. Uh, so what uh, one of the verification companies saw, Integral Ad Science, is they noticed that there was a, an 80%, 80% drop in the number of advertisers who were, who were blocking uh, the name coronavirus in their advertising, which is, which is really positive. And so I think we'll see, hopefully, see um, investment moving back into um, uh, into newspapers. What we've also done um, uh, in partnership with um, some large news organisations around the world, and through an organisation called Internews, which is a, um, a non-profit that focuses on the sustainability of news and making sure that as many people around the world have access to uh, to reliable news. We've started assembling lists of, um, if you like, safe lists of, of, news, of news public publications that, that take programmatic advertising around the world. We're up to 22 countries around the world. And very soon we'll, all, we'll start launching a campaign where we make those lists available to marketers around the world for free so that they can um, add those lists to their programmatic or 
is certainly into the programmatic supply chain. So we can start remonetizing uh, those. We were particularly concerned about local newspapers because those are the ones that were suffering most from, um, uh, from the, uh, the demonetization. Also, the distribution has been hit in India. I mean, I'm not aware of US, but in India, the distribution has stopped. So they also had to only circulate their digital uh, versions. So uh, would you suggest the same similar solutions for Indian print market as well? Yes, uh, and, and in fact, India is part of the, part of those twenty two countries. India would be part of those. We've got, you know, we've we've collected through um, WANAFRA, which is the Worldwide Association of Newspapers, um, a list of reputable, uh, safe uh, kind of newspapers uh, from a journalistic integrity perspective, which I think is important. And uh, we're we're going to try and um, encourage marketers to uh, shift some of their spending. Uh, into uh, into those publications, so it was not. There was a sort of a two-phase thing. One of them was raise awareness for the for the damage that's being done to news organisations. But the second phase was let's take action and give them a marketing plan which they can use to remonetize news. And we're hoping that that will start getting uh, money uh, investment flowing back into uh, into newspapers. We really hope that it helps the print industry, which is which was sinking even before COVID nineteen came in, and after COVID nineteen, it's really been hit very badly in India. Yeah, I, I'm not aware of your part of the world. Uh, my next question was around uh, the uh, the new policies GDPR and CCPA. So, uh, what I wanted to understand from you is: Has policy shifts such as GDPR and CCPA given rise to healthier customer databases? with a better understanding of customers and their behavior for brands? So, so that's, a, that's a, an interesting and quite a, quite a difficult question to answer. So I think it's in, in two parts. One of them is, has it, has it resulted in better quality databases for consumers? And then the second part of that question is, do we have a better sense of um, consumers' behavior as a result of that? Um, uh, there's almost a dichotomy because the more uh, the, the 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 more privacy controls that we place on data, the more difficult it is for us to get behavioral advertising um, in, in that we did in the old way. So, for instance, the deprivation of cookies makes it harder for us to understand the consumer's journey um, across the web, and we need to look at other ways of of doing that. The positive part of this is that I think we we've the the industry is now treating uh, consumer data with more responsibility and respect as a result of GDPR. Um, we started doing this in 2018 with GDPR. A lot of that work had already been done by C by the time CCPA has come into effect. I, I, I believe that. And for your for your um, for your viewers, CCPA is the uh, California, California Consumer Privacy, um, which, which has sort of been adopted fairly widely in the U.S because there isn't federal legislation here yet, but I think that there probably will be. Um, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a good thing for consumers because they were starting to mistrust uh, the internet as a whole because they were, they were lumping together things like data breaches and fraud with, with advertising, um, you know, with malware, with, 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 with advertising data collection, uh, just because it's a, it's, it's a complex area. And it was reducing trust in the web and it was reducing the ability for us to use that data in a, in a responsible way. So the, I think the good part of it is that um, it, it, will, it will manage um, the frequency, it will manage the, the data safety, um, uh, around uh, around uh, uh, overall digital advertising the the second part of your of your of your question is it is it is now and it will be in the future more difficult for us to um, uh, to understand that consumers measure that consumers journey uh, across the web and um, and it will also put more power into the hands of the of the people who own the data and that generally is the large data platforms and the me and and large media mo large media publishers and so we're going to have to rely on data from them and now and and that's not necessarily a bad thing because as you know google and facebook are very large sophisticated organizations that have built 
uh, very powerful databases to understand consumer behavior, but it means that we've got to get the data from them as first parties rather than measure it as third parties, which is for us from a governance perspective more reliable. Um, when somebody is offering you their data, I'm not casting aspersions or sus suspicions on, on anybody who's, who's owned the data, but I would rather have it verified by my own research. But now it makes it more difficult because third party advertising uh, becomes far more difficult in terms of consent and, um, and measurement than it has been in the past. That was really very insightful. I mean, I, I uh, wish I can meet you someday and understand this more in detail. <laughs> this is, a, this is a one very interesting subject uh, to, that I, I uh, want to understand uh, uh, from you. So, uh, John, last question is uh, about uh, the loss that this entire thing has caused to our economy. How long do you think will it take for brands and marketers to get uh, closer to the normalcy? You know, because uh, right now, ADEX in India is, is almost dropped by 70-75%. Uh, where do you see hope and uh, what would you suggest in general as, as somebody who's so senior, somebody who understands uh, this entire uh, industry? What would you suggest to people? The marketers at this so, point of time. so uh, I'm sure that you read um, all of the opinions about this um, and there are m many smarter people than me who have uh, uh, added their voice to what should what should be happening next I think that there are probably two things one of them is what we as marketers think is is right and good should um, and then the second thing what, what will actually happen so we know uh, from a broad marketing perspective, that if consumers see marketers messaging, and if it's the appropriate messaging, if it's sensitive messaging at this uh, at this time, but if they if they remain in the minds of consumers uh, during this time, they'll come out of any form of recession stronger. There's every time that there's a recession, um, we 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 see research that shows that the adver those advertisers that have remained in the uh, consumers' minds through uh, advertising messaging have come out of the, of the stronger. Uh, we've seen, we saw a, a very rapid uh, drop in advertising um, in, in April, uh, in, in sort of at the end of Q1 and in, and in Q2. We're starting to see advertisers, uh, book advertising now, more than they were uh, before. However, I'm sure you read yesterday, it was official that the U.S. has gone into recession. You know, the old, the old stories when, when the U.S. Um, sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold. I, I think that's not going to be good news for uh, economically for the, for, the rest of the, for the rest of the world. And so it's going to mean that there's less, less, less advertising revenue to spend. But the reality is, I think most marketers would like to spend money, and I think that they understand that it's that they should be spending money during times like this. Um, but but I think that the um, we're we're going to go into a, a time for the next. Oh gosh, I don't know how long it is, but I but I would imagine it would be more than a year where advertising revenues will be under pressure, because I think sales will be under pressure. Uh, um, as you as you know, there are a production. number of people are unemployed. Production, all of those, all of the things that happen in the recession, reduced produ production, reduced demand, uh, and 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 higher higher joblessness um, will 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 influence uh, um, advertising revenue. I I think that there won't be a normal. There'll be a new normal. Um, what that will look like, um, I'm 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 not sure. But uh, I, I think that the sort of Everybody's priorities have changed. Um, every every person has changed. This has changed every person in the most fundamental ways, and it's really difficult for us to be able to uh, to estimate what that might might look like. But as marketers and as behavioural the people who study behaviours, it's 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 a, it's a very very interesting time. But we're also mindful of the pain that people are going through in this uh, in, in this time too. John, thank you so much for speaking to Exchange for Media. We wish you good health. Please be safe. Stay ho stay at home right now and take care of yourself. Yes, Thanks thank you very much.
thank you very much. And I, I hope that you all stay safe and, and well and sane as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you, Wade. All right.